Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Doo, Yamaha revs your heart, and by FXR Racing, world class outerwear. For 2014, Arctic Cat is truly proving that there's nothing new under the sun. And by this, I'm strictly talking about names, where they're resurrecting one from the history books, the El Tigre. In a new industry trend to resurrect old legendary names, Arctic Cat has decided to bring back the El Tigre and also feature new motor designations in four digits, similar to the Cats of 1978. And in this episode, I'm testing the El Tigre 6000. While in 78 there was also a 5000, for 2014 it's strictly a 600. If in 78 they called the El Tigres Flying Tigers, for 2014 they must be headed for space, featuring Arctic's all new SeaTech 2 power plant. The SeaTech 2 motor is an SDI variant that takes a totally new direction, focusing on not just great fuel and oil mileage, but long term durability thanks to the exclusive slot skirt injector design where the fuel and oil mixture is able to be sprayed on the top as well as below the piston and directly at the upper rod bearing. If you're an Arctic nut, you no doubt already have searched the web and have all of the detailed specs on this motor and how it works, so you're probably just wondering, does it haul the mail? And the question that maybe you should be asking yourself is, is anyone else faster? While we are going to put this sled head to head against its 600cc competitors, you should know that the power delivery from the SeaTech 2 is impressive to say the least. Roll on is clean and not at all rough like the old DFI. Mid range is crisp and stout, but top end is where the claws truly come out and you feel the heart of this kitty ready to pounce. Corner to corner railing on the F1100 is where it went a little soft and Arctic knew that they needed to fill a void. It all comes together for the 600 in the twisties, where it truly shines brighter than the outfit I'm wearing today. Crack the throttle at the apex of the corner and you'll soon learn there's no waiting for this motor to spool. With the injectors pouring liquid gold on top and below the piston, acceleration is razor sharp. Flipping the throttle displays zero lag. Mid-range roll-ons are steady and strong and top end runs leave no flakes unturned. Is it class leading horsepower? Well, if it's not, then the other manufacturers went back to the drawing board sometime this summer and never told us about it. Cat knows they've got their claws in a big pot of Oju horsepower, and they're sure it's finger looking good. This chassis needed a lightweight 600, and now it has it. Weighing in at 10 pounds less than the old DFI 600, the El Tigre feels nimble and responsive. While the F1100 was a great motor, we all pined for lightweight and the crisp response only a two-stroke can accomplish. While we did expect to see this motor in a variety of 2014s, reality is you can only get the SeaTech 2 in the El Tigre, and rumor has it, limited numbers will be released. Why limited numbers, you might ask? Well, Arctic Cat is taking this slow with this entirely designed and produced in North America by Arctic Motor so that they know it performs as expected while also creating demand. While durability testing is great and tells the manufacturers a lot, the truth is nothing compares to real world consumer abuse. Similar to other manufacturers, Arctic Cat will create demand while also refining the SeaTech during the 2014 season. And you can be sure 2015 will see this motor in a variety of sleds. And in my assumption, the replacement of the current 800 with a similar Arctic built SeaTech 2 800 in the near future. While the chassis on the El Tigre stays very similar to last year's sleds, there are a couple of refinements to this snowmobile that I think you're gonna really appreciate out on the trails. Up front are the all new Fox Float 3s. Outboard of these new dampers are the new lightweight spindles that shave nearly one pound off of the front end of the sled. The race version RMC hydraulic brake for the incredible stopping power and a new seat foam and shape to put the driver up higher and provide better overall comfort. While the changes may not be pulse pounding, these little refinements are transforming this sled into a potential class leading ride. Standard features on the El Tigre are impressive and offer more than what you might expect to find on competitive models. A 129 by 15 inch and a quarter ripsaw track housing Arctic Cat IFP rebuildable gas shocks is a great way to start. While a new digital deluxe gauge package will tell you all you need to know about your sled. Push button reverse is standard and electric start is available. Add to that a totally usable tunnel bag, sweet green painted slide rails and spindles, and a very acceptable mid-height windshield, and you've got a solid offering in the 600cc class. 
Arctic Cat is making some serious headway in 2014 and punching into the meat of the market with a sled that I believe is truly going to be a winner. The only downside is that if you didn't make it to your dealership in time, you didn't get one. But I have no doubt that the SeaTech will make a big return in 2015. Bombardier Recreational Products is a power sports company that has shifted long-standing paradigms using bold, innovative, and often revolutionary technology. In 2003, they literally reinvented the snowmobile. In 2008, they invented the Spider Roadster and in doing so, created a market. No company in the snowmobile business makes bold, successful moves without the boss coming under snow track scrutiny. Fortunately, we became acquainted with BRP's Jose Beaujolais over 15 years ago. It was just 10 years ago Beaujolais became president and CEO of BRP, and in so doing became responsible for some of the most iconic brands in the power sports business. Among those icons are Sea-Doo Watercraft and Ski-Doo Snowmobiles. In 2003, BRP separated from Bombardier Inc. to become its own entity. In Quebec, uh, when we were part of Bombardier, uh, I can assure you we never had any subsidies from the government of Quebec. Since we are a standalone company, we benefited of some loan, not subsidies, loan to support us in the development of the Spider and the development of the side-by-side -side product because we were entering two new industries. Boisjoli is an overwhelmingly likable, personable, and genuinely humble man. His egoless demeanor almost seems out of step with the high-powered world of big business. However, it is our suspicion that his honest intent and genuine nature are at the very core of his success. His secret? Instilling confidence in the people who work for him. He willingly invites his team to take risks, risks which have ultimately become huge successes. His success? After 18 years in 2003, Skidoo took back number one market share from Polaris. As it turns out, returning number one to Skidoo was only the beginning of the success BRP would enjoy in the capable hands of José Boisjoli. To regain the number one position in the snowmobile business was very important for a few reasons. First, Joseph Armand Bombardi invented the snowmobile here in Valcourt, but on top of it we have very competent people who know about the snowmobile business in Valcourt, in Finland and in Austria. And, and, and for us to have that call to put together to, to launch a rev and regain the number one position was an objective and we deliver on it. Clearly there is passion for snowmobiles at BRP. Passion, according to Boisjoli, along with a desire to be the very best, is at the core of the ski doo division at BRP. Passion is important everywhere. Uh, obviously, it's easier to talk about passion and innovation when you talk about product, because at the end of the day, that's what the customer buy. But internally, we push people to be innovative in everything they do. The one advantage that we have at BRP is we have a good connection with the product, and it's easy to fall in love with the product and to be passionate about what we do. Interestingly, two of BRP's greatest successes the past decade are interconnected. The risks taken with the introduction of the 2003 REV allowed Beaujolais to push the envelope in 2008 with the introduction of the paradigm-shifting Spider Roadster. The most risky is definitely the entry of the Spider or the creation of the Spider because we, we, we're trying to create an industry. The Spider was not existing. But just to come back to the Rev, uh, I came president of Sea Doo Ski Doo in 1998. And we needed to bring our snowmobile business to the next level. And we had that prototype that uh, design and innovation had put together. And every time we're riding uh, the Rev, it was fun. Then we decided to go for it because we needed to change the dynamic into the industry. And it was very successful. When we decided to go with the Spider, uh, it was different. We wanted to have a product to go on the road. We didn't want to enter into the motorcycle business because there is too many players in there, very strong brands. And same story than the Rev. We had the prototype and every time we were trying it, either on the racetrack or the road, we're smiling. 
Boisjoli might be a calm guy, but he is known throughout the power sports business for his bold proclamation that Skidoo will always occupy the highest performance segment of the snowmobile industry. Essentially, Skidoo will always be the performance leader. It's clear that when you set a vision uh, and, and you stand behind your vision and you support the people to make things happen, that it trickled down everywhere in the food chain. And even with the dealers who are our extension in a certain way, uh, they understand where we're trying to go and where we're aiming for. And all of this gel together and make sure that we have uh, an incredible value proposition for the consumer. Under Boisjoli's leadership, BRP has become a very different power sports company in just the past 10 years. The company now has equity in the marine, aviation, off-road and now the on-road power sports business. If you go back 20 years ago, uh, BRP was a two-product company, Skidoo Snowmobile and Skidoo Watercraft, and for a dealer in the south, we're a one-product company. And when I took over in 2003, we accelerated the pace. And then since we widened the offering of our ATV and we relaunched the ATV business, we have entered the spider business, we have uh, entered the side-by-side -side business, and today we have a very diversified product portfolio, diversified dealer network, because today we have 4,200 dealers covering 105 countries in the world, and we have a diversified manufacturing footprint. Then all of this was to improve, obviously, our business, but also to improve our value proposition to the customers and the dealers around the world. And I'm very happy of what we have accomplished. This move to diversify BRP was no accident. It came as a result of a well thought out and very deliberate plan. For sure, the changes at BRP the past decade have been huge. However, we suspect the enlarged footprint the company occupies will allow for even more diversity and expansion over the next decade. In 2003, when I took over, we had the vision to accelerate the pace to enlarge the product portfolio, to accelerate uh, or to have more country where we sell the product and to improve our manufacturing footprint. And all of this goes together. I mean, you can convince dealer in South America to sell BRP product if we have a better offering. It was a strategy in threefold. Product diversification, dealer network expansion, and manufacturing expansion. All of this goes together. And we've done, uh, I believe, a very good job to do it very quickly. Rotax is BRP's wholly owned engine manufacturer located in Gunskirchen, Austria. Over the years, Rotax has forged a formidable reputation for building overachieving engines and innovative technology. Rotax is one of our best kept secret. And for us, when we try to design a product, the power plan, the engine itself, is part of the DNA, it's part of the soul of a product. And for us, I don't see how we could do that with the suppliers. Uh, we prefer to manage those technology. Boisjoli's success is not rooted in subtlety. Skidoo's success under his leadership has come by making moves considered to be, in some circles, outrageous. When we decided to design the Rev XP, uh, we've told them we want to be the best in weight and by far. We don't want to win only by five pounds and we let engineering to uh, define a goal. And they came with the 50 pound goal. It was an incredible task, but they delivered a 50 pound, but this came from them. You may wonder, and so do we, why Skidoo pushes so hard on the market with year after year improvements and groundbreaking innovations, sometimes bringing improvements long before even we think they need to. I have a a uh, very strong belief and philosophy. Uh, I prefer to cannibalize myself, but that our company cannibalize ourselves than let the competitor do it. We'll conclude our interview with Jose Boisjoli with this question. Maybe you've heard about Sea-Doo's paradigm-shifting Spark watercraft introduced late last year. The Spark's unbelievably low MSRP has generated a ton of buzz in the snowmobile industry. The question on everyone's mind is this, could BRP build and sell a value price snowmobile equivalent to the Spark watercraft? The, the idea about the Spark uh, was to re-spark the industry and insert 
certain country to spark the industry because in some market, the watercraft did never exist. And since the introduction, many customers asking for a Spark snowmobile, a Spark ATV, or a Spark side-by-side. -side. And we'll look at all the opportunity. But uh, we're very happy with the first reaction of the customers. And we'll see how successful it will be. There is literally no more iconic name in the snowmobile business than Indy. Polaris landed the first Indy way back in 1979. And since that time, the name has become synonymous with lightweight, great handling, superb ride, and outstanding performance. In model year 2013, Polaris decided to reintroduce the Indy moniker using a hybrid chassis with a 600 Liberty clean fire engine. The move proved wise. Last year, the all new Indy 600 captured the imagination of thousands of buyers. And even though many of them were too young to remember just how iconic the Indy truly is, they were more than tickled to get a high value snowmobile for a silly low MSRP. In model year 2014, Polaris did what most of us expected them to do. They slid their 150 plus horsepower 800 Liberty Clean Fire Twin into the Indy platform. Then they proceeded to position it at a price point that is quite literally stupid. There is way too much stuff here for this little jing. And more importantly, there is way too much performance here for a price this low. To get to the price point Polaris targeted, some stuff had to be rethought, reworked, and removed. There's no question Indy series sleds differ significantly from the flagship Rush models with their unmistakable ProRide external shock suspensions. Upon closer examination, there's other tweaks setting the Indy apart from Rush models. There's a rationalized instrument cluster, no electric fuel gauge, a conventional tunnel with an internal shock rear skid, and a one inch lug track. Sounds like a lot of stuff got pulled from the Indy 800. However, does the Indy 800 need a deeper lug 125 inch camel sneaker? Do frogs fart on lily pads? Does the new gauge cluster require a neutron microscope to read the digits? Do chickens have lips? Here's a better question. Is the Indy 800 SP fun to ride? The answer to that question is a resounding yes. The Indy 800 possesses the magic dust DNA of an 80s Indy. The sled feels super light because it is. The old IQ bulkhead was more than 20 pounds heavier with an 800 than the Rush front clip. The Rush Pro Ride is about 15 pounds heavier than the complete Indy rolling chassis. The result? Flickability on trails just like the original lightweight all aluminum Indy. Throw in Polaris variable caster IFS with its near perfect turn in and rock steady on center feel and there's legitimate rationale for calling this thing an Indy. Luke and AJ gave me this test ride assignment because they know, I know, Indies. Unfortunately, an increasing number of our viewers were nothing more than twinkles in their mums and dads' eyes when the Indy took over the snowmobile industry. So you look like you know what you're doing and can behave like a true Indy aficionado, I will demonstrate here on Snowtracks TV how we position the Indy's weird lawnmower gas gauge while refueling to keep snow off it. If snowmobiling is about fun, and it surely is, rest assured the new Indy 800 SP is giggle till the ice cream comes out your nose fun. Take note, this thing is seriously fast. Maybe the fastest 800 this year. We're not sure yet. We do know this, the Indy 800 will pass the C-Note down Kevlar Lake faster than you can zip up your 1990 Indy leather suit. So you want to know, if the Indy 800 SP rides as good as the Pro Ride Rush. Of course it doesn't. This skid began life in the original Edge, then morphed into the IQ. It has copious rear arm travel, it is two-way coupled, and it uses a torque link on the rear arm. It has to be more than coincidence Polaris has been able to draw on so much of the Indy's original DNA with the new Indy. The sled shifts out, free wheels and finger walks past 100 per, just like my 89 Indy 650. Yes, riding ergos are dramatically different and make no mistake about this, 80s Indies didn't ride this well. Still, handling here is more than reminiscent of the trailing arm Indy chassis. 
You can back the ND800 into turns and it'll stay laser level until the carbides get positive bite. At that moment, the sled rotates and carves a buttery smooth arc past the apex. Just as indicative of the original Indy is the ability to control inside ski lift by simply moving your upper body. For me, it's hard not to get a little misty-eyed around the Polaris 800 Indy SP. There's a ton of history, my history, tied up in that handle. However, once I swing a leg over this snow bullet and pull the trigger and it begins to push me off the back of the seat, my eyes start to dry out. For sure, there are some compromises demanded by the new Indy 800. However, I'm positive your wallet is going to be happy to make them. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Go Ride Ontario, yours to discover 